real talk, has anyone ever felt good on chemistry, like, ever? Like, in the history? Like, I can't fathom, like, feeling like I know chemistry. Because I, what's an atom? Just kidding, I know what an atom is. AP Chem. You know what? I never thought that I would make this video because I never thought I was going to get a 5 on AP Chem. I'm good at science. Got an A plus in the class and a 5 on the exam, but I don't know. Hi, I'm Hannah. I took the AP Chemistry exam in 2018. I got a 5 on the exam and um, I also was one of the people that skipped introductory chemistry. So I had never taken a chemistry course before AP Chem, um, but I still got a 5 on it. And so I'll have tips in this video for people who skipped introductory chemistry and for people who are just taking AP Chemistry in general. So, here it is. <laughs> in class, in class, pay attention to the labs. The labs give you the essential knowledge for the concepts that the college board requires you to learn, but it also helps you visualize it. And you'll find with, with AP Chem, visualizing things is so important. A significant portion of the exam is lab-based questions, and when it comes down to it in chemistry, they're kind of all lab-based questions. Like, you'll the occasional theoretical question, but, you know, in general, they're lab-based inquiries. Oh my god, the sun's out. Ah! Class, ask any and all questions. My chemistry teacher, he was quite a character. He had this really, really long beard, shaved head, round glasses, and wore like tie-dye shirts all the time. He was that kind of science teacher, pretty cool dude. But like, he and I hope I would hope all chemistry teachers or most chemistry teachers are willing and able to answer any questions you have, whether it's basic. Um, whether it's asking for basic ex further explanation of a concept that was just introduced or in a lab or anything or if you're just wondering what would happen if you mixed this with this or how to make this or like anything like that um explore like, ap chemistry is a great class for exploration and even if your question seems super off topic you might find that the answer will help you understand something else in the class this is especially helpful in the beginning of the year but ask for review even if you're a little bit iffy iffy on any basic concepts. So I really didn't know how my um, chem introductory chemistry knowledge that I taught to myself would compare to the introductory chemistry knowledge that everybody who had taken the class, um, the introductory class had. So especially for like the first few weeks, I would stay after with my chemistry teacher with a few other people because, you know, a lot of people benefit from review and I'd stay after a, a one or two days a week and just go over basic concepts and I found that I was pretty solid on most of the stuff. But yeah, make sure you're really solid on the basics so that you can just dive into more of the advanced stuff. Always, always have a periodic table and copy of the formula sheet that you get on the exam on hand. I put a copy of the periodic table in like the front, um, the front cover or the back cover or whatever of my chemistry binder and then on the other side I put a bunch of the equations from the formula sheet just so I was constantly seeing them, I constantly had easy access to them um, because those will be your best friends for the test. Take pictures in class, take pictures of notes so you can go back to them later. You should also obviously be like writing down and taking notes but um, if you have pictures you know, sometimes you can go back and reference them, you can actually look at the exact way that the teacher taught it, take pictures of labs, take pictures of lab notebooks, take pictures. They're very helpful. So, review often. Ask your teacher for review if he or she can fit it in, and if not, review on your own. I've mentioned this in uh, videos before, but what I would always like to do is just review concepts via video, like Bozeman Science has great um, AP Chemistry, Biology, a bunch of different topics, review videos, crash course, I'll link a bunch of different um, helpful chemistry channels below to check out, but I would like to just always have one of their videos playing in the background if I had time, whether it was like in the shower or while I was falling asleep at night, just having like, just like hearing the concepts and seeing different people and hearing different people explain it um, can help make, help, can help you make more sense of it. Make a study group with friends or with your lab partners or anything like that. Um, I never really met with my lab partners or study group or whatever outside of class to study for chemistry, but we did have a group chat. In fact, my entire class had a group chat um, that we'd go to whenever we had questions that um, our teacher couldn't answer in the moment, whether it was because it was weekend or anything like that. Use your resources. Your classmates are a resource, definitely. This one, this one, this one is so important. It's probably the most important. Do AP style problems. Multiple choice, 
for cubes, especially leading up to test time. You should be doing it all the time, year round, whenever you can in class. Hopefully your teacher is assigning them and giving you tests and quizzes that are in AP format, but if not, they're very easy to Google. You could also very easily find the answer sheets to pretty much any previous um, released AP exam or AP style question booklet or anything like that. So um, if your teacher isn't able to answer them for you, you could just find them on your own. For the test, the very first thing you should do is get a prep book. I got the Princeton Review um, cracking the AP Chemistry exam and I loved it. It was great. It worked for me. Uh, maybe you prefer another one, but this is this is one that I liked a lot. Ask your parents for it for Christmas or something like that or get it in September. Definitely get it way, 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 way before the AP exam because you could use it to study for tests in class as well. A lot of prep books, including Five Steps to a Five, I believe, come with um, study plans that you can pick from, but uh, I've always found it helpful to just customize it um, and focus to focus on the stuff that I am particularly weaker on. So you should have a good idea of what you're the weakest on based on you know your scores on quizzes or tests or just how you feel about a certain concept. In your study schedule I would definitely recommend focusing on your weakest sections first. If you're like me and you're okay at chemistry or you're good at chemistry or whatever but you don't like feel like you have that solid understanding, feel free to read the whole review book. That's pretty much what I did. I think I went through all of the chapters and took notes from all of the chapters too. <laughs> yeah, I color coded them and just I, I went at them for um, the weeks leading up to the exams. I think I started um, doing that maybe the first week of April and just did one or two sections a week, honestly. Now that I think about it, it was probably more like mid-April, like April vacation, but you get the idea. I went through all the sections and, um, or especially the sections that I was the weakest on, I may have skipped the basics, and I just took notes on everything. And also, as I mentioned before, do a bunch of multiple choice and free response question practice. Don't just do them, correct them on your own and learn from your mistakes easy to correct yourself on FRQs because all of the FRQs come with scoring guidelines um, with sometimes explanations for the answers but always the correct answers and then multiple choice you'll probably have the answers to them and possibly the explanations but if the multiple choice don't come with explanations that's what your teachers for you could always ask your teacher to explain the question um, and why to help you understand further why you got it wrong or you could just google it again and hope that somebody else had an explanation for it of course memorize 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 trends and the whole periodic table. I know that sounds like a lot, but it helps a lot. It, it helps significantly. That way you won't have to flip back to your periodic table. Sounds intimidating at first, but ASAP Science um, has a great song to memorize the periodic table. If you're able to, um, definitely try to take at least one, but preferably multiple, full-length practice exams. Go through the entire exam and pretend it's the real thing, do it timed. We went to a location with a bunch of other schools and we took a full test and pretended like it was a real thing and we got it all scored and then we came back a few days later and all went over um, it together so we could see what we got wrong and try to figure out why. Seriously the biggest thing with this test is just practicing and practicing and practicing some more. Seeing all the types of questions that you can and just figuring out common answers to them. So the format of the AP Chemistry exam, uh, it's split into two sections. Section one is multiple choice, there are 60 questions. You get one hour and 30 minutes, which is plenty of time. It is worth 50% of your exam score, um, and you're not allowed to have a calculator on this section, which sounds a little scary, but um, that just means that if you have to do any math for these problems, it's gonna be very simple, very basic math. Section two is the free response section. And again, you get plenty of time for this section. You get seven questions with one hour and 45 minutes to answer them, and obviously it's worth 50% of your exam score. One hour and 45 minutes, again, is plenty of time. Um, if you're worried about timing, that's just something that you can practice ahead of the exam. But there are three long and four short answer questions, um, and they focus a lot on lab, um, experimental design and labs and um, creating and analyzing atomic and molecular views and observations and basically this is the whole real science chunk. 
and you are permitted a calculator on section 2 of the exam, which means the questions might be a little more difficult, but uh, you can always reference your equation sheet. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely learn what every single one of the equations on that sheet means and the context under which you could use them. The best way to study for the free response section is to look up previous free response questions because you, they are always going to be new questions on the exam, but they'll probably follow a similar format to previous year's questions. So if you're familiar with how um, the format of questions tends to be and the format of the answers, um, you will increase your um, score on this section of the exam. Another great tool is the course and exam description. In it you'll find exactly what the College Board expects you to know and expect and will test you on. Um, as you can see, AP Chemistry te um, tests six big ideas. These big ideas include the laws of thermodynamics, rates of chemical reactions, changes in matter, periodic table in general, intramolecular forces, um, that's a really big one. Um, but yeah, they kind of get progressively harder from Big Idea 1 to Big Idea 6, but it all depends on, um, I guess, what you're good at. As with all AP exams that I'm aware of, there is no guessing penalty, so make sure you answer all of the questions, especially in the multiple choice section, even if it is a total, total, total guess, it's fine. In the multiple choice section or a free response question or any question on the exam, if you don't know, try to step back from the exam and think about it logically. Chemistry may seem obscure and there are definitely obscure parts of it that you don't see in everyday life, but elements are the building blocks of life and everything ever, like literally everything. So try to think about what the question is asking and try to picture what it would be like in real life and from that sometimes you can conclude um, what might make the most logical sense as an answer. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it for this video. I hope this helped at least a little bit. Um, AP Chemistry is really hard, but you can do it. I believe in you. Just the pain will be over soon-ish. Um, I'm Hannah, thank you so much for watching. I have other videos on how to get a 5 and 8 push, AP Bio, college stuff, whatever you want. I probably have it somewhere on my channel. I also have study songs. I do study songs for biology and other ones, but only biology is on this channel. We'll see, I'm rambling at this point. Thank you so much for watching, goodbye.